Hey guys, welcome back. So on last week's video, we showed you the process of cleaning up this area of the garage. Now this week, we're going to take you back and show you the actual process that we use to clean and paint this area of the garage floor, and so you can see the finished product that we have now. My first step was to cut off the old half-inch steel bolts that were used to secure the 2x6s to the wall as a bumper board to protect it from trucks backing into it. The first four and a half bays have the bumper mounted flush with the top of the wall, and the remaining two and a half bays have the bumper mounted about three quarters of the way up the wall to accommodate a shorter truck. Since I don't have to protect from trucks at all, I'm going to drill new holes to put bolts into and mount all of my boards flush with the top to make them uniform all the way down the wall. Using my angle grinder, I attempted to use a cutting wheel to cut off the bolts flush with the wall. This didn't work out, so I ended up switching back to a grinding wheel and ended up having to do it the hard way, but ultimately I got the job done. If you've never used an angle grinder, be aware that you absolutely need eye protection for this tool. I didn't have a face shield, so I ended up using my welding mask instead. I also wore a long sleeve shirt and I'm wearing gloves to protect my skin from the sparks and the metal shavings that this tool will generate. After cutting the bolts off, I laid out my boards and then marked the location of the new bolts with a piece of tape. If you're dealing with cinder block like I am, make sure you don't drill directly in the middle of the block which could cause it to fracture. I used my Ryobi hammer drill with a half inch Diablo hammer drill bit to make the holes for my bolts. A half inch bolt is overkill for hanging a 2x6, but since it was what was originally used when we bought the place, it was easier than cutting off all of the bolts and switching to concrete screws. To make sure I don't drill too deep, I mark my bit with tape so I know when to stop. Finally, I'll come back with my hammer and my wedge anchors and tap in the anchors until they're fully seated. With the bolts taken care of, I start on the floor. Each bay has a wood bumper board to bridge the gap between the garage floor and the driveway. Unfortunately, this bay has a section that's fallen apart, so I'm going to remove the entire board Cut off the bolts that are holding it in and replace it with new pressure treated 2x6s which I will secure with concrete screws. To clean the floor, I use my Ryobi pressure washer with 12 inch surface cleaner and water broom attachments. The surface cleaner allows you to wash large areas of the floor quickly while keeping the water contained to the areas you actually washed. This is extremely helpful for cleaning up the water and speeding up the drying process. We don't want the dirty water to dry back onto the concrete, so we use our shop vacs to vacuum up the standing water. We did this process twice to the entire floor to remove as much dirt as possible before progressing to the actual cleaning agent. Next we use purple power degreaser to remove oils and any remaining dirt. I sprayed the floor down again with just enough water to have standing water on the surface. Then I poured the degreaser directly on the floor across the entire bay. Next, we use long handled scrub brushes to scrub the entire floor. This will cause it to foam up so you will know which spots you missed. Let it sit 5-10 to 10 minutes and then come back and rinse it all off. Our final step was to etch the concrete with muriatic acid. This may not be necessary depending on the type of paint or finish you want to apply. My paint required the concrete to be etched, so if you do this, just make sure to wear the appropriate safety gear, since this is a very harmful acid that can cause chemical burns to your skin or your lungs. Due to a technical issue, I don't have footage of applying the acid, but I will be painting another section of the floor soon, and I will make sure to cover the acid process in depth in that upcoming video. There was a spot over by the garden tools where someone must have spilled half a gallon of blue oil-based paint on the floor. If you are interested in seeing photos of the before and after of removing it and the process of how we did it, then check us out on Instagram at Grunt Cave.
two coats of paint applied, eight gallons of paint used up, and the only thing left is to install the red bumper boards on the wall and paint the door boards. So we now have five out of seven garage bays painted. The first two bays we can't paint yet. We have to figure out how to stop it from flooding every time it rains. So next week we are gonna move inside and do projects on the interior. So stick around for those. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us at Grunt Cave on Instagram and leave some comments down below and we'll see you next week.